Well, hello there, party people. Welcome to podcast number 48. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, a podcast. Welcome to another cleaning video. Oh, wait for it. What's in my toaster? A waffle. How long has that been in there? We'll never know. Uh, this is a great way to start out the video. Welcome to the most disgusting cupboard in my entire household. It's just a labyrinth, really. It's a labyrinth full of mysterious items that I shove in there to deal with at another time and place of my life, which never really comes about. Anyway, this is a cleaning video. Would you like some cleaning inspiration, cleaning motivation? Look at that computer chair I have. Yes, I'm in the market. <laughs> Wait, duct tape is not a trend? Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, so I'm showing you my house, the before, if you will, and here I am just hanging out. I thought I should get ready for you guys, and then I thought, well, that's not real life, so I'm cleaning. This is how I look when I'm cleaning. Most of the time I've got a mask on. Actually, most of the time I don't. <laughs> but I bought some masks recently from TJ Mask. TJ Mask? Really? PJ Mask. P -p PJ. Okay, here's sweet Meredith. What I would really like to do the whole video is just stare at her. Can we do that? It's possible. It's what I do most of my days. And then I look around my house, and this is what I see, and I'm like, dang, I should clean. <laughs> I had just ordered a bunch of clothes, and to be honest, I don't th even think I've tried them all on. That's the mask that I wore, I don't know, a couple days before, and I really liked it. I shared it in a TJ, TJ Max. Max, yeah, that's what it's called, right? TJ Mask, PJ Ma okay, let's move on. TJ, is it even called TJ Max? Be a Maxinista. What a, moving on, it's all irrelevant. <laughs> so, here's my bathroom. Oh my gosh, you guys. I feel like as soon as I clean something in my house, it just gets messy again. Oh, especially my girl's bedroom. And I did get a clip of that, but I, I didn't share it. I don't know where that clip went or why I didn't feel the need to put it in here. I don't know. But their room literally, uh, like at bedtime before I put them to bed, I tidy it up with them. I'm like, okay, let's put some things away. And then the next day, it's like they're not even home most of the day. They're at school. And it looks like a tornado again. And I'm like, oh my, how, what happens in here? What kind of activities are you guys up to? But I saw a meme or a... I don't even know what it's called. It's just like a quote. I don't, it's it's from unknown. So who knows who came up with this saying or whatever. I just hit Meredith in the face with something. She's fine. She's fine. Okay. The quote reads, if you think their messy room is hard to look at, wait until it's empty. Oh my man, you guys. That hit me right between the eyes. Let that sink in for just a moment. Just a moment. And I like... You could have pushed me over with a dang fella pillow. Feather? Really? A feather pillow? <sighs> Words. I have to oil up my jaw. We're just getting started. Hopefully by the end of this 20 minutes, I'll sound uh, a little better. I'll get my words out a little easier. It probably won't happen. No promises. Anyway, that quote, you could have knocked me over with a feather. Is that the expression? <laughs> because... I, some, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I get upset. I'm like, guys, you are old enough to be, you know, keeping up with your messes. <sighs> you know, whatever. They're kids and they're doing their best. Whatever. It's like they don't even see the mess. Oh, have you seen that picture where it's like what you see and it's just like a messy room with laundry, dirty laundry everywhere. Oh, by the way, my kids put their clean laundry in the dirty laundry basket. Probably my biggest pet peeve. What is your biggest pet peeve? We'll move on. And then the other side of the picture is like what your kids see their messy room as being. It's like some utopia of a playground. You know, it's just, it's perspective. It's all a different perspective. You know what I mean? So I have to remind myself to give them some grace and remember that this is just a season of life and eventually they will be teenagers and not even want me in their room at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? I hope it doesn't get to that point, but it might. Here's the thing. I think my husband showed me a picture because I think Ellen shared it or something. I don't remember why he shared it. Oh, because he commented something and it was funny and he wanted to share his humor with me. But it was a picture of like Kim Kardashian's playroom. Is that right? Did 
Was that a picture that was recently shared? I don't know. Who knows? I don't keep up with the Kardashians, <laughs> but he shared it with me and he goes, do you see this playroom? It's like beautiful and spotless. And I thought, oh my gosh, like my playroom looks nothing like that. The picture that he shared was an empty room and he commented, we don't give our kids toys. He was just being funny. Obviously our kids have toys. Otherwise, what would they make a mess with? But, um, so in my mind, I look at a messy room. Oh my gosh, speaking of messy rooms, look at this darn kitchen after dinner time. So I look at this, like my messy house, whatever, and I think, oh, I'm a fail. Some kind of failure because I should have a super tidy house. But like, why, you know, who's telling me I should? Just because I see beautiful houses on Instagram and YouTube doesn't mean everyone lives that way. And yes, living in a tidy home is very important, I think. However, I shouldn't immediately jump to, oh, I'm such a failure because I'm not and neither are you. And really there's no such thing. Like it might seem like it's a thing because we have this rabbit hole called social media, which shows, you know, what all the other moms are doing better than us, <laughs> basically. Um, I've had plenty of mom fails. I'm sure you could see that in my videos. I share them with you. Like we missed Eleanor's pajama day. Oh my gosh, was that a nightmare? Did I feel like the worst mom ever? It was three years ago and I still have nightmares about it. We're all just doing the best we can. And that's not a fail. I, well, I, I mean, am I just trying to make myself feel better? I don't think that's a fail. If we're doing the best we can, that's all we can do. And like, I don't know, I just feel like sometimes, you know how they say, <laughs> I'm eating the leftovers as I'm listening to a podcast. You know, that's just, gotta squeeze in the moments while you can, right? Okay, anyway. What was I saying? Uh, oh, oh, talking about how you're supposed to have this like village, right? Do you have a village? Am I part of that village with you? I hope I can be part of that village. You're part of my village. I tell you what, you guys give me so much support and kindness when I feel like I don't deserve it. And in real life, I think, oh my gosh, I feel like everyone has a village. Everyone's got their, you know, whoever part of their family, helping them out with their kids, leaving them for the weekend so they can go on getaways and yada yada. And I just, Alex and I don't have that. It's just him and me and like, I get on myself, I shared on Instagram how like, oh, my Valentine's Day breakfast, here's my Pinterest inspiration, and then here's what I did in real life. And that shouldn't be mistaken as a fail either because, dude, they had heart-shaped pancakes. Can I tell you? <laughs> they had heart-shaped pancakes. But uh, you know what? My dad used to make me Mickey Mouse pancakes. I was going to say Minnie Mouse, but she's got a bow and he's not that skilled. <laughs> anyway, um, but that's the extent. And that was always so special to me. And I didn't have, you know, Pinterest or Instagram telling me that Mickey Mouse shaped pancakes weren't good enough. Like, I'm sure he didn't feel like a failure as dad. a dad because his Mickey Mouse pancakes didn't add up to the pancake art you see nowadays. And do you get my gist? I'm sure you understand as long as your kids are eating any kind of breakfast, and let's be real, like I made them pancakes at six in the morning, so that in and of itself is a win. Also, lunches. Oh Lord, the lunches. I can't get over it. Dude, if you're packing your kid a Lunchable, like that is not a mom fail. You better pat yourself on the back because you sent your kid to school with something edible <laughs> to eat, and that's a win. L they make Lunchables for a reason. Can I just say that? There's a reason that Lunchables are so popular because they're easy and they're there for us when we don't have the time when the, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes in the morning or at night or day, whatever, to make our kids lunch. And plus, sometimes Lunchables, well, I, I honestly can't remember the last time I had a Lunchable. It's besides the point. What, what was I saying? Hopefully, in the end, hopefully your kids are happy, at least just a little bit. My kids, they can be moody a lot. So anyway, as long as your kids, you know, you're doing your best. So be happy that you're doing your best, even if that doesn't compare to someone else's best. And I say this all the time. I shared it in my last cleaning video. Oh, say, can you see? see that American flag? It was on the floor. Should I burn it? Is that the rule? <laughs> I feel like it's okay. It was inside my house. I used to be a safety patroller. Uh, okay. Anyway, I'm getting off track. This is taking a turn, going back to comparing ourselves. And ugh, I hate that. Like puke on that thought. I don't even want to entertain the idea. It's just not healthy. And if we're being honest, 
You know why moms back in the day were so much happier? Because they didn't have social media accounts to be like, oh, Bonnie Jo's home is always so clean and beautiful. Like, you know what I mean? Back in the day, being a mom was just good enough. I was listening to something on Instagram the other day. It was kind of like a I don't know if they have a channel or a podcast or whatever, but it was a clip of it. And she was like, being a mom was just good enough. And moms didn't compare, you know, Valentine's Day breakfasts or whatever to the ones on Pinterest because Pinterest wasn't a thing. And they lived in their bubble and they burnt their heart-shaped pancakes. And that was good enough, my friend. It was good enough. And talking about sucking at life. The other day, Alex asked if I wanted to start a garden again, and I reminded him what happened last time I built a garden. A little insight there, it uh, it died. So, I mean, not right away. No, of course not. Uh, at first, it grew. It gave me some confidence and a sense of pride, and then it died. <laughs> and not one by one, the plants died. It was all at once, and it was awful and I mean, traumatizing, really, let's be honest. I don't know what they did back in the day when they, people specifically relied on their crop to eat. I don't know. I would starve, okay? So, um, should I start another garden? Yep. Yes, I do. Let's set that up. <laughs> I would rather start a garden than try on that dress again, even though I'm hanging it up. What am I thinking? I just don't know what to do with it. I, I really need to go through my closet and do another declutter. Okay. Moving on, sometimes you get things offline that you think are going to look great on you, and then they don't. And then, you know, I could return it, but it's just so much effort. I would rather just donate it <laughs> to someone who it would look good on. All right, anyway, my garden. Uh, was my garden a fail? I mean, yeah. Yes, it was. But let's look for the good, because I always try to look for the good and uh, the good enough moments, if you will. The win that I got from the garden is that the kids went outside and they helped me for a while. They got that sunshine, they got their hands dirty, they played with worms, and it was pretty cool. So in that aspect, it wasn't a fail. So I roll with that all the time. I mean, they didn't get to enjoy the fruits of their labor <laughs> whatsoever, but that's okay. Also, it's like, how much am I supposed to care about? Like, how much? Because there's so much that we're expected to care about, like immensely care, like the environment, using less plastic, reusable grocery bags, eating right, exercising, all the, like mental health, happy marriage, happy kids. I could go on. Washing my makeup brushes every day. I mean, like, who does that for real? Keeping our kids alive. I could do that most days budgeting clean home clean clothes <laughs> you know I just like if I can't if I'm being honest like there's just so much and I'm hanging pictures with a dang like I should have just gotten a hammer did you see that chaos that just happened I should have just gotten a hammer it would have taken me four seconds but I didn't feel like it I was too lazy but I got those picture frames hung good enough you know what I mean that's what I like to call good enough you know what else? My kids have been really asking for a pet lately. And that's why, you know, the whole list that I just read of things that I'm supposed to care about, that's why I can't get a pet. There's just too much that we do as women, as parents, whatever. There's so much on our plates. And then on top of that, my kids, and they're always like, let's get a pet. And all the time, and I feel awful. And I'm like, you know, because I tell them no because I can't guarantee that I'll be able to keep it alive. And I know it wouldn't all be placed on me. My kids would take care of it sometimes, but I wouldn't expect that of them because I know it would, some of the burden would fall on me and my husband. And I would love to have a dog. I would love to. I don't want to be that mom that says no, but like I have too many kids to take care of. You know what I mean? That's my number one priority. <laughs> I just, you know, Add an animal on top of that, I'll pass. You get me? Do you have a pet? Please share with me if you have a pet because I feel like oh, we weren't even able to keep the stray cat we found outside that roamed around our yard. We couldn't even keep that cat alive. And I mean, that's a story in and of itself, a story for another time, maybe. Maybe I'll keep that one to myself, though. It's pretty sad, <laughs> if I'm being honest. But, um,. Like, I mean, do you want to know? Um, uh, I can't tell you. I can't tell. I got to leave some kind of suspense, a cliffhanger, keep you coming back for more. 
<laughs> it's like so dumb. <laughs> I'll follow the wads because one day Kim's gonna tell the story about the stray cat. Oh man, you guys, I really think I am reaching into an untapped market here. Did, is anyone still here? <laughs> Did I scare you all away? Uh, you know how random I can get with this podcast of mine. <laughs> it's not a podcast. It could be a podcast. I mean, I'm doing a voice voiceover. It's basically the same thing. Anyway, watching me clean, it's just added, added fun. It's added eye candy. <laughs> is that what it is? So ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Okay, next topic. Well, speaking of eye candy, can I, let's talk about this. Should we talk about this? I don't know, but we're going to. I tried on a couple bathing suits the other day. Lord almighty, I needed some help. I <laughs> I needed a friend to be there in the room with me to be like, no, it's not as bad as you think it is, Kim. It's not as bad. Alex was there for me though, so he got me through. But it got me thinking about how and why as women, we pick apart our bodies as if we, like in that moment that we're trying on their that bathing suit, that tight, fashionable bathing suit that shows like 95% of our bum. Like the dimples, the flaws, the insecurities, they all come out in that moment. And we get amnesia. I, I Let's refer to it as like bathing suit amnesia. Because that's what it is. And I, I don't know. Typically, I don't have any issues with my body in a bathing suit. Because I know that our bodies are amazing. Like I grew a human being in my body. My body has carried me through many like a marathon I ran freaking 26 miles and my body got me through that like I birthed a child it's a it's crazy what our bodies can do for us why am I in my head saying oh my gosh I should try on another bathing suit because I don't look quote good in this heck yeah I do heck yeah I look good in my bathing suit I mean do I look perfect do I look like a model could I like put on a model shoe I mean I probably could because the pictures in the magazines that we see of models, I mean, they don't even look like that. Hello, it's called, pho what is it called, Photoshop? <laughs> it's called Photoshop. They don't even look like that. The fact of the matter is, the problem is not with my body, it's with my mind. Because, again, I look around me and start to compare, which is the worst thing you could possibly do. I look at superhumans like JLo and think, where is their cellulite? Cellulite is normal. Why isn't this news being broadcasted why do we hide it who started doing that i don't know uh no but no one's flawless you are perfect just the way you are you know admire someone else's beauty without questioning your own let that sink in for a second even if that beauty <laughs> is uh got like seven filters slapped on it on instagram you know what i mean admire that but don't question how beautiful you are because make no mistake about it you are beautiful and you are enough. Anyway, I think maybe the point I'm trying to make is no one else cares what I look like in my bathing suit. Like literally no one because we're all worried about what, our, like we're all worried about ourselves. We're all worried about our own insecurities and what we look like in our own bathing suits. What I'm trying to get to is love your body, okay? Self-love, all that good stuff, rainbows, sunshine, and all of that. You guys know, I'm just trying to, live my best life trying to become a flower child <laughs> i say that word far too often in the past like two weeks give me tips on how to become a flower child do i need flowers in my hair someone told me that tip what else do i need i forgot man i totally forgot my checklist i wrote it down <laughs> i need to like look it up ways to become a hippie uh buy a beetle a beetle bug what are those? A Volkswagen? I <laughs> don't need one of those. It won't fit all my kids, so that's not an option anymore. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me during this Clean With Me. I hope it gave you some kind of motivation or just gave you some good company while you are cleaning. If you want to um, put some like ideas for the next cleaning podcast motivation for me to talk about, that would be cool because I feel like this one was just like a crap show of whatever came to my brain, which is, you know, not any different from any of my other videos. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much again for watching and hanging out with me, and I will see you next time. Bye.